Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Mormonism with the Murph, where we do a fair and objective analysis of the church and its truth claims, its history, doctrine and policy. I'm really excited for this new multi-episode series we're going to be doing on polygamy and mostly Joseph Smith's polygamy. I want to give a bit of a disclaimer, polygamy uh, is probably one of the most troubling and controversial uh, parts of church history. Uh, it's one that uh, has bothered a lot of people. A lot of people have left the church over it. It was a big factor in my faith crisis. Uh, but it's something I think that's really important for people to be aware of. It's a part of our history and it's important to have understanding. I just want to reiterate that the purposes of my video and of this channel, it's not to attack the church. It's not to try to destroy or weaken anyone's faith. Neither is it to try to persuade people the church is true or to be an apologist. I want to try to present the evidence, the history, the sources. Let's look at what critics have to say. Let's look at what faithful historians and apologists have to say. You come to your own conclusion. I believe in being fair and looking at the evidence. I'm not going to hold back anything, even if it's not faith promoting or even if it reflects badly on Joseph Smith. Uh, the information is out there and I think it's important to go through it. So with that said, I'm going to go through uh, the topics that we're going to cover with Joseph Smith's polygamy. There will be quite a few. Uh, in this first episode, it's just going to be a bit of an introduction. We're going to look at the church's LDS Gospel Topics essay. If you don't know much about polygamy, I didn't really know anything about it until I was 22. Uh, I knew about DNC 132. I knew the church practiced polygamy in Utah. I didn't know Joseph Smith was a poly polygamist or any of the details. Uh, a, a funny story on my mission, um, there was, this would have been, I was probably out about a year in Canada and we had a neighbor who was this old, nice uh, British lady. And, you know, we would have talked to her, you know, now and again. And we, we never really shared the gospel with her. And I felt, you know, we, we really should. And I felt prompted to, you know, to talk to her about the Book of Mormon and about Joseph Smith. And her response was one that was very hostile. She was quite uh, rude and insulting about Joseph Smith. And one of the specific things she said is that he was, uh, you know, he was not a righteous man. He was going around and sleeping with loads of women. And I remember feeling really offended. And like, how can you say that about Joseph Smith? And I kind of like rebuked her and like testify that he's a prophet of God. And I felt really like offended and annoyed about it. But it wasn't until I came home, till I went through my, my research and my faith crisis, did I learn actually about uh, Joseph Smith's polygamy. And some of it is really, uh, really troubling. Uh, in another episode, we're going to be looking at Fanny Alger, who was considered to be one of Joseph's first plural wives. The critics think that it was an adulterous affair, but we'll have a look at the documents. We're going to be looking at the sealing power and Doctrine Covenant 101. We're going to be looking at the accounts of the angel and the drawn sword that apparently Joseph was telling to uh, associates and wives that he was being commanded to practice and restore polygamy or else he would uh, lose the priesthood and uh, be killed. Uh, we're going to be looking at the marriages to other men's wives. So these were women who had living legal husbands, both members of the church and not members of the church. Uh, this is known as polyandry. We're going to be looking at uh, some of the wives of Joseph Smith that were teenage girls, as young as 14, and their relationships. We're going to be looking at were there sexual relations uh, or were they just uh, eternity ceilings? We're going to be looking at Emma Smith, Joseph Smith's first wife. And Doctrine and Covenants 132, we're going to be looking at what it has to say in the doctrine in, in that revelation, uh, the thing specifically to Emma and Joseph, some of the threats in there and how we can make sense of it. We're going to be looking at the public denial. So Joseph Smith publicly denied that he practiced polygamy. And we're going to be looking at uh, also some of the accusations made against Joseph Smith by uh, certain people like John C. Bennett, Sarah Pratt, William and Jean Law, and the Navio Expositor. We're also going to be looking at polygamy in Utah under Brigham Young, John Taylor, up until the manifesto uh, by Wilford Woodruff in 1890. We're going to be looking at is polygamy doctrinal? And then I will be sharing my concluding thoughts. So it's going to be quite a long series. So I want to start off. So polygamy, if you don't know what it is, it's the practice uh, where one man can be married to at least two or more wives at one point. 
polygamy is found uh, in the Old Testament. Many of the prophets, such as uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David, Solomon, uh, they were all polygamists. They had plural wives. In DNC 132, a revelation was given. Uh, Indian rev the, 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 in DNC 132, a revelation was given to Joseph Smith, and he claimed to restore the practice and that he married many plural wives. In the LDS Gospel Topics essay, it acknowledges the history of Joseph Smith's uh, history of practicing polygamy. So let's read uh, from the Church's Gospel Topics essay. I'll put the link in the description. After receiving a revelation commanding him to practice plural marriage, Joseph Smith married multiple wives and introduced the practice to close associates. This principle was among the most challenging aspects of the restoration for Joseph personally and for other church members. Plural marriage tested faith and provoked controversy and opposition. Few Latter-day Saints initially welcomed the restoration of a biblical practice entirely foreign to their sensibilities, but many later testified of powerful spiritual experiences that helped them overcome their hesitation and gave them courage to accept this practice. So they're saying that Joseph Smith, he was commanded to restore the practice, that he introduced it to some close associates. Um, many people struggle with it, obviously in particular, many of the wives, particularly young girls, but some people did later claim that they received a spiritual manifestation or an experience confirming to them uh, that plural marriage was of God. Although the Lord commanded the adoption and the later cessation or ending a plural marriage in the latter days, he did not give exact instructions on how to obey the commandment. Now, I know a critic would push back and say, well, Doctrine and Covenants 132 gives the instructions on how to obey the commandment. And that's some of the ways that Joseph Smith went about practicing, such as keeping it hidden from his first wife or marrying other men's wives, was him not following the instructions given. Significant social and cultural cultural changes uh, often include misunderstandings and difficulties. Church leaders and members experienced these challenges as they heeded the command to practice plural marriage. And again, later as they worked to discontinue after church president, Wilfred Woodruff issued an inspired statement known as the Manifesto in 1890, which led to the end of plural marriage in the church. Through it all, church leaders and members sought to follow God's will. Uh, so uh, polygamy was restored and then polygamy was stopped. Now, I know a critic would say that uh, Wilfred Woodruff, although they're stating it as an inspired statement, uh, they would see it that President Woodruff really gave in to the pressure from society, the pressure from the law, because polygamy was illegal in Utah uh, during that period. And the church was really threatened that their leaders would go to prison and they would lose the temples if they didn't stop the practice. Uh, so critics would really see it as, well, was God's work, was uh, this doctrine restored? Uh, it, it was stopped by, by men. Uh, and we'll look at that more in the episode where we look at Utah polygamy and the manifesto. Uh, the Gospel Topic essay continues, saying that most of those sealed to Joseph Smith were between the ages of 20 and 40 years of age at the time of their sealing. The oldest, Fanny Young, was 56 years old. The youngest was Helen Mar Kimball, a daughter of Joseph's close associate, Heber C. Kimball, who was sealed to Joseph several months before her 15th birthday. So she was 14 years old. Marriage at such an age, inappropriate by today's standards, was legal in that area with uh, parental permission. Um, marriage at such an age, inappropriate by today's standard, was legal and some women married in their mid-teens. Helen Mark Kimball spoke of her sealing to Joseph as being for eternity alone, suggesting that the relationship did not involve sexual relations. Now, I know Brian Heels would say, although it was legal, it definitely wasn't common and it was eyebrow raising, I've heard him say on multiple occasions. After Joseph's death, Helen remarried and became an articulate defender of him and a plural marriage. Following his marriage to Louisa Beeman and before he married other single women, Joseph Smith was sealed to a number of women who were already married. Neither these women nor Joseph explained much about these sealings, though several women said they were for eternity alone. Other women left no records, making it unknown whether their sealings were for time and eternity or were for eternity alone. 
Now, I will give this disclaimer about polygamy. Joseph didn't leave any first-hand records. Emma didn't either. Everything we know is is really second-hand. It's from his close associates. It's from his wives. However, uh, th there is substantial evidence that polygamy was uh, practiced, that Joseph Smith did have up to 40 wives. And um, there's you can't really uh, deny those things, but we don't know all the details about those marriages and about the relations, but we'll go through the evidence that we do have. So there's some common church myths for why polygamy was practiced. Now I'm getting this from Fair Latter-day Saints, and these are things I might have heard growing up. Uh, I've been told that the church practiced polygamy for reasons such as to look after the widows and orphans when they crossed the plains uh, to get to Salt Lake. Uh, many men died and there's lots of widows. And so that's why polygamy was practiced, to make sure that more children were being born because there was just more women than men. And that's why polygamy happened. You know, I've been told these reasons are accurate. Has the church been lying to me? So Fair Lardy Saint says, sometimes those who are not informed about the history of plural marriage offer reasons for its introduction. Reasons such as the above are not accurate or supportable. They were not and are not offered by the church as reasons for practicing plural marriage. Church leaders and historians have long rejected these folk explanations but some critics continue to act as if they come from the church rather than members who have simply not studied the matter in detail. Now, I think one thing I would push back here is, um, you know, I, I would have heard those things growing up, uh, you know, going to church in, in Sunday school. Perhaps these are just, uh, it's the culture. It's things that have just been repeated over and over. But the church, uh, I would say, has not been forthright in correcting this until uh, recent years about how polygamy was practiced. They really tried to stay away from talking about Joseph Smith's polygamy um, because polygamy is a really, it's a really troubling aspect of church history. It's really unfair to women. And it's, it's something that really bothers uh, women, especially. Uh, so here's a, an infographic on the screen of the wives of Joseph Smith. You can pause it and just have a look. Uh, it, there's 34 wives on this, although uh, more accurate uh, records indicate that there's about 40 wives. And this is uh, verified by both church historians who are faithful, like Brian Hales and, also, and Richard Bushman, uh, and also critics. So here's the critics' position, uh, basic, basic summary on polygamy. And we're going to go through this throughout the series. Joseph Smith married around 40 women. Many were done without the knowledge of his first wife, Emma, which goes against DNC 132. And that shows that Joseph is being secretive, dishonest, sneaky. Joseph began polygamy before there was any written revelation or any sealing power given. The, the revelation on plural marriage in DNC 132 wasn't written down until July 1843, but he was practicing it as early as the early 1830s or mid 1830s. He married many women who already had legal husbands, polyandry, which is a violation of DNC 132. Joseph married teenage girls as young as 14, uh, which they would find troubling that he was almost being a bit of a sexual predator and that he was coercing them. Joseph publicly denied and lied about his practice of polygamy. Joseph Smith used his prophetic position and coercion to pressure women into marrying him. Polygamy was illegal, therefore the church was breaking the law in the practice of polygamy. <laughs> polygamy is unfair and abusive to women, and the church has hidden uh, their history of practicing polygamy. So that's a summary of the critic's position, and that would have been my position whenever I uh, went through my faith crisis and left the church, uh, which, as we go through these videos, I think that's a very valid interpretation to have as we go through the evidence so in summary, the church released in 2013-14 a gospel topics essay about Joseph Smith's polygamy. They claim that Joseph Smith received a revelation that he was commanded to restore this biblical practice. Joseph married around 40 women between the ages of 14 to 52, and many of these women were already married to other men. I believe the number is about 14. These marriages were done in secret until Utah and Joseph publicly denied practicing polygamy. The church was not open and transparent about the history of Joseph's polygamy until recent years. While the church does not practice polygamy, we still believe and practice that a man can be sealed to more than one wife in the next life. I believe two of the apostles 
uh, President Nelson and Dalania Jokes. Their first wife uh, has passed away, but they were sealed to them and they're, they both remarried and they're sealed to both wives. So they, they do believe that you can be sealed to more than one woman and be with them in the next life. So we're going to watch this short video. It's a two minute video uh, that the church has brought out uh, from the church history department. It's a two minute summary uh, about polygamy and how it started. Uh, so uh, what can you tell us about Joseph Smith and the beginnings of, of plural marriage? Where did the idea come from? Well, the first thing to understand about the introduction of plural marriage in the early period of plural marriage is that we have very, very few records. There's very little, especially in Joseph Smith's voice or in the firsthand voices of participants at the time that helps us to understand what they were thinking, how they were feeling, what the experience was. And so it's, it's difficult to answer that question in many ways, and we wish we knew more but we just don't have the sources to, to say definitively. What we understand is that Joseph came across the, the principle and the practice of plural marriage in the Old Testament when he was working on the translation of the Bible, probably in the very early 1830s, not long after the church was organized. Yeah, I didn't actually mention that in the video, but uh, Joseph Smith did a translation of the Bible in the early 1830s. I believe it was between 1830 to 1832. Uh, it's most likely there where he came across uh, that, you know, the prophets uh, like Abraham, Isaac, Moses practiced polygamy. And uh, people's account claim that Joseph Smith inquired. Uh, and also in DNC 132, they inquired as to know why the Lord uh, authorized them to practice polygamy. Uh, and that was the sort of like the source or the catalyst for him receiving, uh, for receiving the revelation. He began introducing the practice of plural marriage when the saints were in Nauvoo. And he said that he had been commanded multiple times that it was time for that practice to be implemented and restored among the Latter-day Saints. As Joseph Smith is teaching this, practice of plural marriage, how do people react? In general, when he taught the, the principle to someone, he invited them, encouraged them to pray about it, to receive their own witness and confirmation. And while most of the people who he taught plural marriage to during this period initially were very shocked and maybe even resistant, we also have many accounts of men and women receiving manifestations, receiving testimonies for themselves, that this was something that they should do. So it's, it's introduced confidentially, and Joseph invites people to seek their own spiritual confirmation before entering the practice. Yes. Over time, many people have associated plural marriage more with Brigham Young, the church's second prophet, than with Joseph Smith. Why is that? I think it's because Joseph Smith introduced the practice very quietly and very gradually and among a very small group of people in Nauvoo. No, I th you've noticed some of the wording that Joseph Smith introduced it confidentially or quietly or gradually. A critic would say that he, he did it secretly. Um, he didn't want you know it to be publicly known while he was telling to the rest of the church membership that he wasn't a polygamist and all those accusations made against him were were false um so i know a critic would definitely probably roll their eyes and push back that they're trying to soften it um there'll be an episode where we'll look more at joseph smith's uh denials of polygamy but yes he definitely kept the practice secret most likely because it was illegal and against the law Navu. And it wasn't until the saints got to Utah that Brigham Young publicly announced and acknowledged the practice of polygamy. And from there, it became a nationally known and controversial practice that was associated with the Mormons in Utah. Okay. So that really sums up uh, my video today. And the, oh, if you want to find out more about Joseph Smith's polygamy, I would recommend going on to josephsmithpolygamy.org by Brian and Laura Hale. They're very transparent. They have all the history there, um, documentation about Joseph. What can you tell us about? So 
I would definitely recommend watching that. Uh, you could also go on Your Polygamy by Lindsay Hansen Park. Uh, that's really good as well. On the next video, we're going to be looking at Fanny Alger, who was one of Joseph Smith's her, his first plural wife. We're going to be looking at who she was, their relationship. Was it a marriage or was it an affair? We're just going to look at the documents on that one. So that'll be a good video. If you've enjoyed this, please like, share and subscribe. You can uh, support me by donating to my personal PayPal account, stephen.murphy1996 at outlook.com. If you want to keep this content uh, going, uh, I'm dedicating a lot of free time to do this. You can also get in touch with me. Please give me comments and feedback to my videos. Uh, you can follow my Facebook page, Mormonism with the Murph, with new updates on my videos. And you can also send me personal email as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. and I will see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.